Hana from at my canine life on Instagram. I'm just gonna go ahead right now and tell you I am not a professional YouTuber. I am not a like a product reviewer of any kind. This is gonna be you can find a lot a lot of great information on YouTube about specifics on Sony but I'm gonna kind of dwell more into how I picked why I changed from Canon to Sony and kind of the Instagram dog world because that's a lot of what my followers um, look at how it works for dogs how it works for traveling how it works for hiking and how it works for Instagram I am not a professional photographer at all like it is just my hobby I've been doing this for about like four years um, seriously and so I'm gonna go ahead and just dwell right in I have no idea how long this video is gonna be I'm gonna hopefully hopefully but I want to touch on a lot of points here and I have notes so if you see me looking at those I'm sorry I'm not a professional I can't memorize all this and I'm just trying to film this video there's Maple's tail that just went by um, so we're gonna go ahead into it so background a little bit about a year ago little it was about in April um, my apartment got broken into after I went on a road trip and I had my Canon 5D Mark III and my 24-70 2.8 lens stolen um, a with along with a bunch of other electronics but that was like the main thing. They had left two of my lenses however and so I went into the moral dilemma of do I want to replace my Canon 5D Mark III and maybe go to a Mark IV because at that point the Mark III is old um, and if you guys don't know, Mark III is old, it's discontinued now, the Mark IV has come out. Um, or did I wanna go Sony? I've always wanted to go Sony, but I had lenses and I was already invested. And so I kind of looked up a lot of reviews and everything and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so what happened was I decided to go Sony. And the biggest thing is because of kind of the price point but also what was offered to me and what I was told some of these things that I was told is true and some I feel like were not as true and didn't really apply to me as well um so I just wanted to go over kind of what had happened and kind of talk through my process and talk about some things I'm gonna go over very basic things first until I delve a little bit more into like the features that I really liked I'm gonna start with the fact that a Canon 5D Mark III or four. I'm going to talk a lot about the four because the research I've done shows the price of the four current and things like that. But I personally have never used a Mark four. I've only used a Mark three and that is like 10 years old at that point. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the Sony a seven three, not a seven R three, not the a seven two or whatever i don't know or the a9 i i just know about what i've used and that's why i can only talk about those because that's all i know okay so this is the sony a7 III. this is what i use um now this it came out in 2008 so it is within the last two years a year um from when this has come out so it's very new, very relevant, and it costs about just the body with no lens, $1,999, so $2,000, okay? They also have the Sony A7R III, and what the R stands for is you gotta think of it like resolution. It means it just has more megapixels, um, it's sharper, and the images, like if you're thinking you wanna take pictures and you wanna blow them up to a canvas size, or you want them to be like blueprint, prints then you want the r or you know you shoot pictures and you want to crop it all the way in because they're running in the background and you want to crop in that's when you get the r i rented the r before i bought this because they didn't have the non-r version to rent and i realized the file sizes were too big my lightroom my computer at the time was not new my lightroom was just like it was loading everything so slow it was taking me forever to edit and you can yes you can in the in the computer or in the camera make the quality go down but I wanted to see it to like its full potential the image sizes were huge they were exporting huge they were like three times the size of my previous images and I was like honestly okay where do I post these except for Instagram like yes sometimes I send um, images to like companies and clients but that they only need really a full res right like they don't need like 40 the, I don't even know I don't even want to know how many megapixels it is you know but in the end megapixels is just a number um it matters about you know like how sharp everything is and your lenses and things like that so 
I decided to against it. It's also $500 more expensive. And I was like, I'm going to put that money and put it into a lens. So now we're going to go to the Canon side. The Canon size, the 5D Mark IV currently goes for $2,500. So body is more expensive than the a7 III. It's at the same price as the a7, um, R, a, R, whatever, a7 R3 or whatever it's called. So in that sense, you can kind of pick whether you want that, whether you want that resolution or you want to kind of save that money and put it towards something else like a lens or something, or, you know, you're a little bit tight on funds. Um, the other biggest thing that I wanted to talk about was that so, um, the 5D Mark IV, came out in 2016 so it's about four years old now sony does not come out with cameras very often they are known to go like 10 years before making a new mark series and it's just what they do i think it's because everyone buys the old one and then 10 years later it comes out and it's like oh well my camera's 10 years old now might as well buy the new one um canon is also more popular so you are going to see a lot of um like if you go on Craigslist or Marketplace or anywhere that sells used cameras, you're going to see a lot more used cameras available than Sony. So if you are someone that wants to buy things secondhand, which I have bought things secondhand, there's no problem with that. You are going to have more opportunities with Canon than buying something full price or finding something used um, for Sony, if that makes sense. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is lens cost. The biggest, biggest, biggest thing I've noticed is one, Sony does not have as much lens variety, okay? So I'm talking like they have their Sony line, they have their G Master line, they have their Zeiss line, but it's all Sony. And then they also have the Sigma Art line, which that works for like, I mean, it doesn't work for all cameras, but Sigma Art lenses, you know, they have a Canon mount, a Nikon mount, and a Sony mount. Um, but for example, like Tamron doesn't, I don't think makes anything for, you know, Sony um, and like not the Sigma Art series, but just Sigma in general doesn't. So you are kind of limited, okay? They're still releasing new lenses and whatnot, but you don't get that variety and like getting the cheaper, like I'll talk about it in a bit, but the nifty 50 is what people call it versus just like the 50 that they have for Sony. Um, Sony lenses are expensive. Let me tell you, like they are, more expensive than the camera and so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna say it out loud but i'm also gonna write stuff here on the side so you guys can see for sony you have and these are the popular lenses that a lot of people use and that i personally use and i'll show you here in a minute so you have the 24 to 70 2.8 g master that is this guy right here this is honestly what i use I want to say like 90% of all of my photos. This is my go-to lens, my most versatile lens. It's 2.8, it's 24 to 70. So you get that 24 wide angle, but you also get the 50 and the 35 and you can zoom in a little bit more. Um, this lens costs $2,200 new. That's more than the camera. $2,000, $200 more, okay? So that's that price right there. The same one in Canon costs $1,000. $600. So there is almost a $500 difference between the two lenses. And let me tell you, I think the Canon one is newer because it's a Mark II of the lens where when I had it a year ago, I had the Mark I. So that's one thing. That's one lens. The next lens that is very popular for professional photographers and a lot of action photographers is this one, 70 to 200 2.8 G Master. So if you guys notice in so in Canon cameras, the cameras that have that red ring around here, that shows that it's the E like the E series professional line or whatever it's called. Like that is like the one the, the best lenses that they make. That's Sony G Master. Okay, so G Master means it's like the best lens that they make out there. So this lens, 70 to 200, which is literally like a baby, um, cost two hundred two thousand six hundred dollars. Okay. On the other side, Canon costs $1,800. So that's saying that's a $700 difference, okay, for the same lens. Sony, that's like the IS, Mark III, USM, whatever that means, like, you know, has auto stabilization and stuff like that. And same thing with this, okay? So that's, that's a big difference. Those are the two most popular zoom lenses. I'm going to go into primes because a lot of Instagram people love prime lenses. The nifty fit okay so i'm gonna go in sony again sony has a 50 millimeter 
1.8. And that's like that basic, everyone starts with it. It's called the Nifty 50, you know, it's 1.8, but it's like the cheapest lens they offer, but it's prime. That is $200 for Sony. Whereas Canon, it's 125. So not as big of a difference, but that's still a difference if you're on a budget, right? Same exact lens. 85 millimeter a lot of people love that one that's like a very good portrait you know that's you got that huge um zoom going on and you got that really nice bokeh in the background for 1.8 which is that basic you know 85 millimeter in sony it is 550 dollars in canon it is 300 dollars. so see you can see there's like good significance in chunk right the other lens i want to mention that i have is the 55 millimeter zeiss lens so sony has sony zeiss g master that's kind of how it goes okay so in the in the order of professionality i guess so this is a zeiss lens and it'll say on the side it has like a little blue thing that says zeiss and um that just is like kind of a step up it's sharper uh, uses different technology i don't know the whole specifics to it but um i got this one because it was actually the highest recommended lens from everyone that uses sony from every vlog every video i've watched the 55 lens was like your go-to lens for all sony users i am not a prime person i've realized that really early on that i like my 24 to 70. i like to have zoom i hate changing lenses so i'm not a huge prime person but the more and more i use this and try to make myself use the 55 i love it i had a 35 millimeter sigma art on my old lens or my old camera and i love 35 like i think 35 is my go-to but that's because what that's what i was comfortable with some people are comfortable with the 50 and they want to go 50 some people like 24. it's totally your preference and that's kind of why i like the zoom lens because i can have 24 to 70 and not worry about losing quality however i have to point out that these are not kit lenses these are not the ones you get that's like 70 to 200 4.5 okay these are 2.8 very professional style lenses so they're going to give you that sharp and when you're fully zoomed in at 70 you're going to get that bokeh effect right but look at the size difference that's what i'm going to talk about in a little bit so now we kind of have prices down right so whereas the the sony the canon body might be a little bit more expensive than the sony the lenses it depends on what lenses you want so that's something you have to research beforehand is do I want prime lenses or do I want zoom lenses? Um, going into that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the biggest thing people talk about when switching to Sony is like, I wanna go mirrorless. I wanna go Sony, I wanna go mirrorless because it weighs less. That's a myth. I'm gonna tell you right now, in certain cases, it weighs less. However, not all the time, it doesn't weigh less. See, I'm gonna show you some numbers here and that's why I needed this because I looked all this up for you guys. So. This camera, just like this, without the body, weighs 1.43 pounds. Whereas Canon, the 5D Mark IV, weighs 1.961 pounds. 1.96 pounds, okay? I don't know a single person that can put two hands out and be like, oh, I can feel the dip. I mean, maybe half a pound, okay? Like half a pound you probably can feel, but when we get into ounces, I don't know anyone that can be like, oh, yep, yep, that's like three ounces heavier, okay? So body itself, yes, it's smaller. For someone with small hands, I can fit this camera a lot better in my hands, okay? Like it fits nicer, I can hold it, it's, it has a better grip to me than my Canon did. But someone with bigger bulky hands, this might be a little, like, my hand fully fits around this. If you had bigger hands than mine, it would be a little bulky, okay? So that's totally on you. Um, I want to go into now just lenses, okay? I'm just going to list them out here. 50 millimeters, 6.6 .6 ounces, 5.64 ounces. Sony weighs more, okay? Um, 85, 13.1 ounces, 15.2 um, ounces. Okay, so still, we're, we go opposite here, okay? 24 to 70, so that's this lens here, right? The zoom lens, 31.3 ounces, 32.1 ounces. That's very similar. That's like an ounce, guys. Like, can you really tell an ounce of weight, right? And then in the bottom, for 70 to 200, which is this mega guy right here, you have 54.5 ounces versus 48 point three ounces okay so sony weighs almost 
six more six more ounces and that's a big deal like six ounces that's like almost half a pound like that's a big deal okay this thing this is not something you lug around your neck and like go hiking okay this stays in your backpack um this is also not a lens I take hiking okay unless I'm like going to the beach and I'm very flat not walking around a lot but I want you to put into perspective what lenses are you using okay for me the myth about Sony weighs less was a lie because I use these two lenses primarily, which are almost identical, if not heavier in weight than the Canon version, okay? Here's the disadvantage though. Because you have a smaller body, it's awkward sometimes with the lenses. So I'm gonna just show you, I'm about five foot five. I don't wanna say my weight, but like an average weighted human being, maybe a little overweight because I eat a lot of carbs, it's fine. But I wanna show you right now when I put it, like that, it weighs like a good amount. And when I have my hand here, there is more weight physics going towards the front of the lens. So I normally have to counterweight it, okay? I'm also not a super strong person. So if you're like, oh, I lift weights for a living, whatever, okay, yeah, you probably use one hand, but I have to use two. So that's the 24 to 70. This is normally what my camera looks like. Yes, you can get probably get a battery grip for a Sony as well. It just makes it more bulkier like you can for a Canon. Um, but I will let you know right now when I had my 24 to 70 on my Canon, it felt a lot more balanced, okay? Um, the next thing I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna put on my 7200 and I'm gonna show you this. This lens, is a beast. Like, I'm not kidding you when I tell you this Like is like a newborn baby. It's like a baby. This thing is huge. Like, I, can, I can't physically hold this with one hand and take photos. Like, I actually, like, have to usually do like this and take photos, okay? So this lens is heavy. So a lot of people want this lens. A lot of people love this lens. It is a great, great, great action lens, but it is also heavy. So if you're a hiker and you're someone who's taking pictures of your dog and your dog is a relatively good stay, you're probably not gonna need this lens, okay? But I'm not saying you can't have it. I'm just saying for hiking purposes, this would be really heavy, okay? Um, so that's why I feel like, okay, a lot of Sony people say that Sony is great because they do have the prime lenses, which are great lenses, and they weigh this much. They look tiny, okay? Like this, this, I could like do reps with this, okay? This is small. So I'm not saying that Sony isn't lighter. Sony is lighter, okay? But in prime, 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 prime. So if you are someone that wants to use zoom lenses like you love your zoom lenses and or you want those like big 135 you know prime lenses think about how the body feels on your hand okay because that is a huge thing if you're going out and you're taking pictures for hours and you're starting to get a hand cramp because it, it doesn't feel good you might need a battery pack or something like that so i mean again number one tip always rent something before you buy it okay rent it through the through a camp local camera place rent it online rent it from a friend even lenses, rent it because that is an investment you're putting in. That's a lot of freaking money, guys. So you want to rent things before. And I rented every single lens before I even put it on, you know, I even bought it. So there's that. That's all for logistics, okay? So now we're going to go. I just wanted to get that out of the way because that's like the number one thing people ask, right? Is like it weighs less and how much does it cost? So there you go. That was like a good chunk of the video. And I'm sorry you have to listen to me, but I'm also just trying to like freaking rush through this. So, because right now it's at 19 minutes and like it might be cut down a little bit because I don't know. I might be lazy and just upload it. I don't freaking care. You guys can listen to me talk. Okay, other thing that I'm just going to kind of talk about for Sony, okay? I'll, I'll compare it to Canon, but both the cameras I'm talking about are full fan cameras. That means that when you put on a 24 lens, it is actually 24 millimeters. Whereas if you were to put it on a Rebel series, like a crop sensor, you will actually get a little bit of zoom. So instead of it being like 24, it's going to act more like a 35. And it depends on the ratio. Um, Like I know Canon is like 1.4 crop or 1.8 crop. So think of like, 24 times 1.4 1.8 that's like what you get okay that some people love that right because they had they're like okay well i want more than a little bit more than 70 to 200 put if you had it on a crop sensor it would be more than 70 to 200 however i do not know this about 
I don't know if this is for Canon, but in Sony, you can make your camera into a crop sensor, okay? There is a setting in there. I've never done it. I've never needed to, but if you were like, oh, I need to get a little bit closer, you can make your camera into a crop sensor, okay? So that's not, if you love that style, that's not something you're going to lose out here, but you will lose a little bit of quality when you do that. Full frame just gives you a more crisp, nicer dimension to things. Um, and then depending on the, your lens as well, right? Because it's a combination of your body and your lens and your skill. It's not always whoever has the same camera as you is not going to take the exact same photos as you. It's all within someone's eye, how they edit. Um, so one thing I know people ask me is, how come you didn't just buy another Canon when you already had lenses? So I told you that the the, the robber stole my my um, body and a lens, but I still had two lenses. I had my 70 to 200 and my 35. So. I just was missing my favorite 24 to 70. I could have just gone out and bought a 5D Mark IV probably. And, um, hi Maple. I could have probably just bought a 5D Mark IV and um, bought another 24 to 70 and it would have been cheaper overall. But here's what I thought when I first went into this. I was like, well, I have the two lenses, right? So like, I'll just get adapters. I read a lot about adapters. People said they work. Um, that's a lot. I'll tell you this in a minute. I don't know. That's This is my experience. So I said, okay, I'm going to get Canon. And then I'm going to get adapters for my other lenses. And then when I get more money, I'll replace them for the native lens. Because the native lens, which means it's, you know, the, the body matches the camera manufacturer. So Sony, Sony, Canon, Canon versus Sony, Sigma, Canon, Sigma, like that. Native means it's Sony, Sony. That is going to be the best compliment, right? Because even though it's more expensive, they're meant for each other, right? So that like, they're going to just work a lot better. Like it's always better to have native lenses, but I've been there where I've bought a Sigma art series lens because it's cheaper, um, for the quality that you're getting. Good girl, Maple. You gonna lay down right there? Hi. Should you be a part of the video now? Yes. Um, so the adapters. I got the adapter in the mail. I tried like two or three different adapters, like the Metabone adapter, the one, the Sony adapter, and the Sigma adapter are the three that I heard about, the three that I bought on Amazon, and I tried them all. They work. I'm not going to say that it, like, I couldn't not take a photo. Like, I would, I could take a photo and it would focus, but there was something a little off. Like, one of the adapters, I would push the like button to take the photo and there would be like a split second delay. So like it would like go like tick, tick, tick. Like it would, be, there'd be a delay, right? So that's not good, especially when you're filming dogs running or something like that. Um, the other one, it didn't um, autofocus, track autofocus. So like I could take portraits. I could take if my dog was standing still and I focused it, I could do it. But if I held my focus down and my dog moved, it wouldn't track it. Even though my camera was tracking it, the lens couldn't. And then it would like freak the lens out. So that was another one of them. And then the third one, um, it just plain out didn't work. So I maybe it just got a faulty one. Um, but another problem I also had was, I'm going to talk about it in a little bit, but a lot of the Sony features like uh, um, eye focus, animal eye focus didn't work on adapters. Um, so I was like, okay, well, what's the point of getting the camera that has all these features if I can't even use them? So the adapter route didn't work. So what I ended up doing at that point was I sold on Instagram. I sold my 70 to 200 lens and I sold my 35 millimeter lens and I bought a 24 to 70 for my Sony. So I started off with the 55 millimeter because that's the cheapest lens I own. And I think, I think like $700. Um, I bought that and that was like, kind of just like there and then uh, about a month or so later I did get the 24 to 70 which is this and this honestly never leaves my camera this 7200 I actually recently just bought on um, marketplace or craigslist someone was selling it for like a little bit cheaper and so I hopped on it it was like in really good condition and I really wanted it for agility photos and things like that um so adapters they might work they might not i honestly am no professional when it comes to technology so i could have been doing it completely wrong and i have no idea so i'm sorry um that's something you can try out but i'm just gonna say now the adapters and from what i've read it just doesn't work as well okay so at that point i already bought my camera right so i'm kind of like oops okay i can't really do anything about it okay so in hindsight and this goes for someone if you have an older Canon or Nikon and you want to upgrade to the newest like 5D Mark IV and you have full frame lenses, 
I honestly would probably urge you to just go with what you have. Um, it's going to be cheaper. You already know how to use the equipment. You're like your Mark IV. If you have a Mark III or anything before, the Mark IV has touchscreen. It has um, Wi-Fi capability and it has all that. So like you're not missing, you're not going to miss out on much from the, the, the Sony perspective. Uh, but if you're someone that has the Rebel series, right, and you only have the kit lenses or you have like the nifty 50 and it's not like you spent, you invested a lot of money in that and you want to go pro like into a professional camera, I would think about going to Sony. Like I love my Sony and I'm gonna get into wine a little bit here, but I don't regret my decision at all. It's just in hindsight, if I would have known maybe adapters didn't work and how much everything costs, like I probably wouldn't have done it that way at the time because I was kind of trying to save money at the time. Okay, cause like, but luckily if you rent or anything, have freaking insurance on your stuff cause that covered my butt, okay? I'm gonna talk about some things here. Number one, color. Sony color is so different and you will realize this the first time you go out and take a picture in raw always shoot in raw okay like learn how to shoot in raw if you don't know how to shoot in raw you shouldn't be getting like a camera like this but when you shoot in raw and you open it up in Lightroom and you have a Canon and you're like I have this preset I already made and you click it that preset is not gonna work and this is why because Sony colors are so different than Canon. Canon has from what I've heard, the best color out of all of the cameras. Like it has the most true to eye color, I wanna say, you know, like you take a photo, that's how it looks, like that's normally how Canon processes it. So their colors are very, a little bit more dull, but that's not something you can't, you know, you can always fix and post-process, right? Their colors are a little bit duller, um, especially in raw, right? And, and so um, it's a little bit easier to edit, to look natural. However, Sony, Sony loves greens. I have no idea what it is about the color profile or what, but Sony really loves green hints, okay? So so you'll take a picture of like skin color and you'll see it, it's like a little green. You'll edit it with like the same thing you edit your Canon and it'll just be off in the hue. This took me a while, okay? Because I'm so used, I was so used to editing in a certain way. I had all my presets figured out and because I had not, you know, jumped into this being like, oh, I really wanted it. I kind of was like forced to get into it because I lost my Canon. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a big change. So all the presets that I had made, I had adjusted, made, bought, whatever, they didn't work anymore. I t it took me a long time to figure out my new kind of style because I had the style of how I was editing my photos and I wanted it to still fit. I did it, I liked that style. I wanted my feed to look the same. Um, so, that's gonna be a learning curve. However, if you look at my photos now, I will post some photos from my trip, my, my spring trip I took last year, that was on my Canon. And then I will post, oh, sorry, Maple's moving the tripod. Um, and then I will post photos of my Sony and you can't tell the difference. And that, and that all is seriously due to editing, okay? I just wanna let you know off the bat that you will notice a color difference and it is not the end of the world. You will figure it out, I promise. Um, I would, when you, if you, if you are looking for presets to buy, ask people if they have examples of it on a Sony version, if they use Sony or if they will edit a photo for you for Sony, because it just, it's a different color palette. Okay, guys. Um, so that's a big thing or make your own preset, you know, kind of get yours. And I really only had to tweak a little bit of my presets and I save the new ones as like Sony's because I still do have some raw images from my Canon that I like wanted to. Um, edit. So I have my Canon presets and I have my Sony presets. Um, so that's kind of one of the biggest shocks that I found. Um, another thing is low light capability. Sony has terrific low light capability. Like I kid you not, like I am taking pictures like past sunset, like, you know, past golden hour where I would not have been able to get a single photo on my 5D Mark III, which by the way, has horrible low light. For people that have the Mark IV, let me know if it changed. I know that the 5D series doesn't have good low light and the 6D series does, but this thing has really good low light capability. Um, the ISO goes up to like tw like 200,000, which like you would never want to do that because that would literally be grain, but it has the capability, right? So that means if it has the capability to go that far, the grain gets a little bit better in the higher ranges, okay? So you can bump up your ISO just a little bit more than you would on your Canon. 
Um, this is really huge for people that hike, that love to take like sunset photos or do um, like hike after, like after it gets darker. Um, really also great for people that want to do indoor photography. Like I, I do, I just recently am getting into taking dog agility photos. It's in like a dark barn. It's a freaking PNW. There's no natural light here. Okay. So like this all here is all like, I have like three lights. Okay. Lamps on right now. That's why I got these weird shadows behind me. Um, and so I just wanted to let you know that it does have good low light cap cap capabilities, but I'm still learning how to use them. Um, to it, you will see um, this section here called um, drive mode. That is what you want your camera to shoot in. There are so many modes. There's single mode, which means you literally hold down the shutter once. If you hold it down, it only take one photo. There is continuous mode. And that is if you hold the, the shutter down, it'll take photos. But what's great is that sometimes you do that and it ends up taking a million photos and like you gotta go through all that and it takes up space in your memory card. So you can do low, you can do, med you can do medium, you can do high and you can do high plus. I'll show you guys, here's low, continuous shooting low. All right, and then we got, oop. Middle, which is what I shoot at. And then we have, it's got to think a minute because it's got to put all the stuff into it. Here's high. And again, it's going to think because it needs to put all the photos that it just took. You'll see the red light here onto your camera. So give it a minute. And then here's high plus. Like it doesn't even sh click. You guys can see how many photos it's loading on there. Self timer. There is um, self timer continuous, which is such a great thing guys when you don't have anyone there with you this is one of the my favorite things is not only can you connect it to your phone through the app you can set it as a self timer and tell it to continuously take images so i would set up my camera right and then i would push the button on a tripod i would walk out to wherever i wanted to stand and it, it would focus and then i would click it i'd have 10 seconds to walk out there but if you don't make it in 10 seconds it's fine because it just keeps taking photos so then you just stand like you know like this for the photo with your back to the camera and it takes like five photos and you're like well i hope one turned out and you go back and normally one does right so that is a great thing. And then it has all these continuous bracket modes, which I have no idea what the heck that means. I don't know what half the stuff on this camera is, but there's that. Um, Sony has 10 frames per second. I don't know when you're gonna need that unless you shoot action photography, sports or dog sports or whatever. Um, and then Canon, the 5D Mark IV has seven frames per second. Three frames per second. That's a good amount of frames per second, right? Like that's three more photos or frames you're getting every second. Um, so if you're someone where you're photographing things, weddings, I don't know, like things where every second counts, this camera is gonna be good for you, okay? Um, but for the basic dog person on Instagram that like, you know, I just wanna freaking take pictures of my dog, the, I never have it on this bazooka mode, okay? Whatever, like freaking gunshot mode, okay? That's like, that's like so stressful to me. Um, <laughs> They also have silent mode, which is nice because it doesn't do the clicky thing because some dogs, when they hear the shutter, they'll automatically get up and run to you because they think, oh, shutter went, I took a photo, I get a treat, Drogon, I'm looking at you. You can do silent mode and it doesn't even make a, it makes like a little click, um, which I guess your dog could get used to that, but it doesn't make the like shutter sound. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is that um, Sony has something that came out a year ago, right when I bought the camera, it was a new update in the camera. So if you go and buy your camera, um, I don't know about now, but before, if you bought your camera, it didn't even have this in it. Like you had to go and install the firmware onto your, onto your, from your computer onto your camera to get animal eye focus. They all have human eye focus and it is exactly what it sounds like. If I take a picture and I'm gonna show you right here in a B-roll footage right here of me using it. If I take a photo, you guys see where that center, like my focus thing is lighting up. If there is an eyeball in that area, um, it will detect it and it'll focus tack sharp on the eyeball. Because when you take dog photos, it is so hard sometimes to get the eye to focus because their snout comes out, right? So when you're taking a photo, like they're 
The dog's snout comes out way more than a human's flat face does. The camera wants to focus usually on whatever is the closest to the camera. And this bypasses that, like this bypasses it. So you can have technically the whole dog's face in the, um, what do you call it? The, the focus center and it'll find the eyeball. It'll be like, tick. Sometimes it's wrong. And I wanna say it depends on the shadow, right? Like I, I was trying to fill, I was trying to photograph a dog once that had like a spot on its neck and it folded a certain way and my camera kept thinking it was an eye. Um, so it wouldn't not focus on that. So I actually had to turn animal eye focus off. It's not perfect because it's just getting the depth. I've used it on people too and it works. However, you cannot do both. You have to choose animal, you have to choose your subject. You have to pick animal or you have to pick human. You cannot do both at the same time. Mine is normally on animal because I always shoot my dogs unless I'm out shooting people and then I switch it over. Um, but that is a great thing. There's a lot of different focus modes. You have modes like um, you have wide, you have zone, you have center, you have flexible spot, and then you have expandable flexible spot. You also have um, lock on. My dog is drinking water in the background. I'm so sorry if it's loud. Gumbo, stop drinking water. Um, so I normally use flexible spot and that just means that I can move it around wherever I want. And that's what I use. Um, I'm not going to go into that because there's so many videos on YouTube that goes into how to use your freaking camera. Um, maybe I should watch more of those. Um, so yes, I wanted to say that. I also wanted to say that I do not personally have any experience because I am not a videographer. I'm literally shooting this on my iPhone right now, but apparently Sony is great for videos. Okay. I don't know that. I'm at 30 something minutes. Apparently Sony is great for videos. I don't really know that. I don't shoot videos, but um, from what I've heard, it is a very great video, um, especially with a prime lens tacked on. It's very good video, like crisp. There's a lot of features in there to use with videos. I don't know. I'm sure there's videos on how to use that, but I just wanted to say that I do not hear that as much about Canon unless it's specifically a Canon like camera meant for recording videos, whereas Sony, like it's like you get both. Um, so I don't have, I don't have personal, I don't have personal use for that. Um, Another great thing I want to talk to you guys about is um, the updates that Sony comes out with. So you remember how I said when I first got my camera, it didn't have animal eye focus. When this camera came out, it didn't have animal eye focus. That is something that they created and they made an update for free for people with um, the Sony camera. Um, but Sony doesn't like it, it only you it only lets you have it for certain cameras like you can't get it for like the really old um, i don't think even the a2 works with animal eye focus um but that's the great thing about sony is they don't need to make a camera all the time because they give you updates canon does not give you updates okay canon is like way past their time okay like the 5d mark III didn't even have like touchscreen and wi-fi um until 2016 when they came out with the mark IV or whatever so the Mark IV has all that, but it took them like 10 years to get up to there. And so, um, but Sony is really great in that. So I really love that. I really love that Sony is kind of just like, oh, you bought our products. Let me give you more throughout time to use your camera to its full potential. Whereas Canon is like, you can wait for the next one and then buy it, right? It's kind of like Apple, they come out with one all the time. So then you just want to buy the new one to get the new features. But Sony is great about that. Um, and I know that this has happened for a lot of different upgrade updates. Um, so that's really great. It's really, really easy to update your firmware. You just hook your computer up with the USB to your um, com camera up with the USB to your computer and download the firmware and it automatically does it for you. It's like there's instructions and everything. Um, another great thing that I've heard that um, is that for, for um, Canon lenses, if you get like a Sigma lens or a Canon lens, um, you might have to calibrate your lens and the calibration for your lens is in your camera. So if you look up calibrating Canon lenses, um, sometimes you might buy a lens from someone or somewhere and it's not calibrated exactly to your thing. So you'll realize, oh, I'm focusing, but how come the focus is like a little bit off? It's not tack, right? Sony, the, the, the mechanism for, um, what do you call it? For calibrating is not in the camera itself it's in the lens 
it calibrates itself. You never need to calibrate anything for a Sony, okay? So if I gave this lens to my friend that has another Sony, she can put it on her camera and it would work perfectly because it's perfectly calibrated for the lens, okay? So whereas Canon, you have to calibrate it on your, for each, for each camera. Um, so that's a big, big thing, right? Another big, big thing is that why is something called mirrorless, okay? Mirrorless means that it doesn't have that mirror in the, in the, in the camera that clicks up and down to make a shutter, okay? Um, have you guys ever heard when you're selling a Canon camera, they ask how many, what's the shutter count, okay? Shutter count is how many times does your camera take a photo? How many times does that shutter click? Every camera has a different amount of shutter life. And within a certain amount of time, you have to replace that shutter or it starts to slow down and become inaccurate, right? However, Sony doesn't have that. Sony doesn't have a, a mirror in there. It does have what imitates a shutter and that's why you still hear the click, but that's why you can have a silent click is because there's technically nothing clicking in there. So if you wanna think about it, if you're someone that uses your camera a lot, you're gonna get a lot more life out of your Sony camera than you are with your Canon camera because you're gonna need to replace um, your sensor or whatever it's called. I've never personally had to do that. I don't take that many photos. I'm not a wedding photographer. Um, but if you are someone, I don't know, who like travels all the time, takes like freaking millions of photos and like, yeah, that might be something you want to look into. Um, granted, they do have a lifespan, right? Like as any electronic, the more you use it, the more likely it is going to be to fail. So, but it, you don't have to replace that specific part. Um, like I said, this has wireless capability. You can set it up to your, uh, an app on your phone and you can actually use it as a remote shutter for like me when I travel by myself I don't have sometimes I don't have someone to take photos with me so that's a very big thing and that's really great I can actually see my screen and focus where I want and click it and put my phone away and have the photo be taken um, I'm lazy so I just do what I told you before and do the like timer thing because <laughs> um, I don't want to have to look in my phone um, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about on this camera, because this video is getting long here, is the pullout screen. So this camera on the screen, it actually pulls out. And if you're used to having the Rebel series of Canon, yours pulls out like this and you can flip it. But this one doesn't actually pull out all the way. It only pulls up like such. I don't know if you guys can see it like such pulls up and then it pulls out right so you're not getting the like swivel you can't do like a selfie you can't see yourself in it like you can with the rebel series but this is huge for dog photography okay because your dogs when you take a photo you want to get on level with them I have mastered that photography squat so I can get freaking low, you know, I can get down low and take a picture of my dog, but some person that maybe they're older or they, they have knee problems or something like they're not going to be able to get down on the floor without literally like crouching or laying down. This is great. You can put your camera down low and you can pull this up so you can be looking here, but you are looking down and the camera's at angle with your dog. Okay. Um, and the touch screen still works so you can still touch and focus with it same with when you shoot up high if you want to shoot that like going down your dog looking up on you you can pull the screen and have it look like this and you can see it while it's without looking through the eye thing okay biggest thing also is live view on this so much better than the canon version canon they want you to use the eyepiece sony they want you to use this battery life is smaller you will probably need extra batteries i'm not saying the battery life is horrible but the battery life is still good on a, on a Sony, but it's less than on a Canon. Um, that's because you're constantly having the screen be on, okay? So 95% of the time I shoot on my live screen. Rarely do I ever shoot like this anymore. And the reason being is because it's just more convenient and it's faster and it just shows everything way more than me doing this. Um, however, when you take a photo, this is something really cool. When you t um, take a photo, you can view it on this, but if you have it up here and you actually view it in the viewfinder, that's exactly what it'll look like in your computer. The eye piece for this is true to 
dimension. I don't know what it's called, but it's like true to whatever you would actually see blown up on a computer. So it looks tack sharp. You might not think it's tack sharp on your screen and you might actually zoom in and see, but if you look in here and you zoom in, like you can see how tack sharp it is. So that's great. Canon doesn't have that. Canon, you can only view your photos on the little screen here, okay? And zoom in and zoom out. So you're taking the photos through the eyepiece, but you're seeing it, right? You're seeing it on a LED screen, which is not gonna be exactly what you saw. So all in all, <clears throat> this long video, I'm like, my throat hurts. And I feel like I'm like, just I've been talking forever now. All in all, Sony's great. I love it. If you want to switch, do it. Like if you have the money to, I personally would recommend doing it. I think they're gonna, like Sony's gonna last a, long, a lot longer. Sony's gonna go a lot further. If, if you're kind of invested already in a bunch of lenses or a bunch of, you know, like you already know how to use, it was a huge learning curve for me to learn a different camera, okay? I'm still learning how to find things. Gumbo, Gumbo, leave it. Come here, leave it, come here, come here. Leave it. Lay down. Lay down. So I'm still learning, right? Like I got this camera you know half ago and I'm still learning new things about it all the time. So it's it's been definitely a struggle for me to learn how to use my new camera. So if that's not something you have time for or not willing to do, I would stick with your camera. Like um a lot of people have mentioned before. I don't know about Nikon, but Sony has a mirrorless lens or mirrorless camera series, guys. Like, I don't know. I think it's the R series or something. Um, Canon has that. And it actually has pretty decent reviews. And they're going to come out with a new one soon to kind of be an upgrade to that. And I heard adapters work really, really well. The Canon adapter works really well for the Canon lens. It's just when you get Canon lenses to Sony or Sony lenses to Canon, it doesn't work very well because they're two different manufacturers. But if you buy, if you have a bunch of lenses for Canon and you buy the mirrorless and the adapter, it works really well, actually. So that being said, think about what you want to invest in. Think about what is most important to you. If you're just like, heck, I want to do it. I probably, I can't guarantee you, but I probably think you will like it, right? But in the, in the long run, if you do, like I said, rent it, try it out. Like don't rent it even for a day. Try to get it for a weekend or like a week and really, really use it. Really, really like if you're renting it, then go on a hike with your dogs or like go do something with your dogs that you're going to be using it for so you can really get a feel of it. Don't just take pictures in your house because that's probably not what you're doing normally with your camera. Um, yeah, I hope that was really helpful for you guys. I know this video is long. I'm really going to try to edit it and cut it down shorter. Um, I'm just... I just had so much to say and it was like such a big thing in such a little time. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you so much.